The video does not call for violence. The video shows the process of infection of the lava with the fungus cardiceps. If you are an impressionable person, please stop watching this video. If you watch the first part of the video, there we got the mycelium of the fungus from the series and the game The Last of Us, and this fungus is called Cardiceps. The fungus parasitizes insects and can sprout literally from the head of an infected insect. It looks like science fiction. But in fact, what you will see today is quite real. To infect the lava with cardiceps, we needed soil and humus, which we had to order in separate parcels. Next, we mix them in a 1 to 1 ratio. The thickness of the mixture of such soil should be at least 10 cm. Then we open the package with cardiceps mycelium and evenly sprinkle it over the surface of the prepared soil mixture. The package of mycelium that was sent to me weighs 100 grams. For each 100 grams of mycelium, 5 or 6 kilograms of leaf lava are needed. It's been a little over a week since the infection. At the moment, all the mold that was on the seeds began to grow on the soil. Now you see the result, which took 10 hours to shoot. And if you look closely, during this time this mold has grown a little. Cockroaches trampled the top layer of soil to such an extent that all pieces of soil became rounded with smothered corners. Condensation appeared on the walls of the terrarium. It indicates high humidity inside the terrarium. In some places underground, dead infected lava are visible. I decided to look through a hand microscope to see what happens to the soil at the time of mycelium growth. Here you can clearly see how the mycelium that was on the seeds began to increase in volume and spread through the soil. In the laboratory I was told that the mycelium on the seeds is in a hungry state and not being able to germinate on insects. It can also be on the seeds of some cereal crops. Now Cardiceps is free. And it's been a while since it began its hunt. We're creating a kind of greenhouse effect that should become a favorable environment for insect infection. But high humidity can also spawn other types of mold that could hypothetically destroy a cardiceps colony. While I was studying in detail what is in the ground itself, I almost didn't pay attention to cockroaches, and this was my mistake. Later I noticed a very strange and at the same time a horrifying situation. Some cockroaches run with appendages that went straight out of the body. In general, some infected ants can, for example, show signs of life even when completely covered in mold. It is still too early to draw any conclusions. But today we will still study an infected cockroach under a microscope. There are several such cockroaches running around. Some of them have white growths on their bodies. Now I have a question. Do cockroaches obey their own will, or are they already controlled by cardiceps? Write your thoughts in the comments. One of the germinated cockroaches was already lying on its side and practically didn't move. Perhaps after the cockroach dies, the full germination process will begin. Now I need to put on a respirator and carefully open the terrarium with minimal air fluctuations. Then with tweezers I get a dead infected lava and a cockroach from which something sprouted piercing his back. Looking at everything that was happening, I didn't have the slightest desire to open the terrarium, but for the sake of your likes on this video, I do it because I'm sure you'd like to look at infected insect under a microscope. Personally, it is strange for me to see a cockroach with such a process. 
as if it had mutated into something else. There are hundreds of species of cordyceps in the world, and everyone chooses their own prey. Some have beetles, some have caterpillars, butterfly pupa, flies, bumblebees, ants. In general, there are many predatory fungus. In this sense, cordyceps are no exception. For example, there are fungus that in the thickness of the soil from their mycelium wave loops noses, similar to lasso, catch nematodes and other small worms in them, and then eat them. Even an ordinary oyster mushroom can do this. Where its mycelium comes out of a tree trunk, it makes small loops and catches insects that crawl slowly. And that's all for now. Bye, everyone.